Hi guys, Danny here and welcome to my video on breeder reactors. I finally got around to it. A lot of people were requesting for me to do it, but the reason I hadn't done it already was because Reka hadn't completed the functionality of the, some of the machines from the breeder reactor completely. Well, they would work, but they didn't have a nice graphic to it and I thought hmm, maybe I should hold off until he finishes it fully because I wanted to do the mod justice and the breeder reactor is actually pretty awesome as well. It's a bit more complicated than the normal reactor and it took me quite a bit of pestering to get it out of Reka completely. Um, <laughs> thanks Reka for this by the way. Uh, I know I annoyed you a lot about this. But I'm finally done with it and yeah I hope you guys have as much fun as I did just messing around with it. So let me get started. Well the thing you use to produce energy in the breeder reactor is sodium. As you can see there, I have molten sodium in there and it's being pumped inside of the sodium heater and that's how it produces energy. To get the sodium, what you do is go here and use this machine, the electrolyzer. All you need to do is put salt in the electrolyzer and the electrolyzer breaks it down into its components, basically sodium and chlorine. Now to make the electrolyzer work, you need a couple of things. First of all, you need a Van de Graaff generator. You can supply it with any amount of power you want, but the progress is only, you know, the progress bar is only going to go uh, every time the machine is being hit by one of these uh, arcs of electricity. So if I made it something really small, like just 10, just 10 watts you can see that it's nearly halted but every time the Van de Graaff generator hits it with its arc of electricity it should go a bit further okay yeah it hasn't hit it yet so it hasn't gone any further let me just increase this just by a tiny bit so you guys know what I'm talking about still too little is that fine now Nope, still nothing. There you go. Oops. But as you can see, now that the arc has started, the machine has started as well. Let me just turn the rain off. And, like I said, it produces sodium and chlorine. Now, I have no idea what the chlorine is going to be used for. Uh, but for now, you can just, you know, put it in some sort of tank. As you can see there, I just have a wooden fluid pipe and it's just being pumped into that tank. So like I said, chlorine up the top of the electrolyzer. The sodium will be taken out from the bottom of the electrolyzer. You have to do it. I don't think you can do it in any other way. Now to make the electrolyzer work, like I said, you need the Van de Graaff generator shooting electricity at it, like because it is an electrolyzer after all. You also need to supply it with power. Basically, it can be any amount over 131 kilowatts of power. So as you can see, it's this 131, 100. So it'd be like, what, 131.1 kilowatts of power. And the machine is working. And finally, you also need to heat it up to 800 degrees. So I'm just using this friction heater. You can see the temperature, 880 degrees Celsius. And the machine should be around that same temperature as well. There you go. And if the temperature is over 800, and if it's re receiving any higher than 131 kilowatts of power, it should start working. Of course, like I said, it also needs the frequent uh, bursts of electricity being thrown at it by the Van de Graaff generator. And it breaks down the salt into sodium and chlorine. So let's have a look at the reactor now. Like I've said many times, uh, my build for this uh, reactor is not the most efficient build. Uh, there are a lot of different ways where you can make it more efficient. Okay, I have this sodium pipe. Is that the same on the other side? Oh, I just don't have it connected. Okay, don't mind the random flickering. I think that's just a graphical bug. Okay, I'll send this video to Reka. Maybe he'll say something about it. Um, so yeah, after the hot sodium... Sorry, the molten sodium is being pumped out of the electrolyzer. It goes inside of this reservoir. 
And the cool thing about the reservoir, which is just from Rotary Craft, is that you can connect them together and they act like one big container. And then I'm just using these fluid pipes, sorry, liquid pipes, to pump them inside of the sodium heater. Now, unlike the normal, um, what is it called? Give me a second. Unlike the normal steam boiler that you use in the normal uh, reactor, where you just use a, a, a reactor core with the normal boiler, in this you have to use breeder reactor cores and the sodium heater. So like I said, pump the molten sodium inside of the sodium heater, and then you just have the breeder reactor cores there, put them adjacent to each other, and like many of you have already figured out, the breeder reactor core uses... I think I used up everything. Yeah, I did. But basically, the breeder reactor core uses the breeder reactor fuel. Very obvious. Did I get some? I did. Only 44 though. 64, that's better. Now, you get plutonium in return. Now, the plutonium, I don't think it has a use for it just yet. The mod, that is. But it might later on. Maybe it's going to be used in the normal reactor as a more efficient fuel. But the thing about the plutonium is, okay, like nearly all of the items uh, from reactor craft, it will give you a lot of debuffs. This should be lasting for 10 minutes. I don't have any milk on me. Oh, I do. Happy days. Here we go. Always have milk with you when you're dealing with uh, reactor craft, like I've always said. And let's see, take out the plutonium. Whoops. That. To do that, drink the milk so my screen isn't all blurry. And just throw in the. Need a freehand. Breeder reactor fuel. One, two, soon enough you'll be able to see, there you go. You can see the hot sodium being pumped up by the wooden fluid pipe. I'm just using a Billcraft pipes right now, but you can use any kind of pipes that allows you to pump liquids out of the sodium heater. And you can see the hot sodium being pumped up, up the golden fluid pipe, and around, and into this tank. The tank isn't necessary, but I recommend it because, as you can see here, you often produce more sodium, hot sodium, than you're using. So, you know, it's probably smart to have a tank just as a buffer. Okay, so the hot sodium is being stored in the tank, and then I'm just using the wooden fluid pipe again to pump it out through the golden fluid pipe, into the heat exchanger. Now the heat exchanger is quite simple. All you need to do is have a steam boiler adjacent to this heat exchanger, and then it just cools the sodium, so to speak, the hot, uh, the hot sodium, uh, and sends it along this pipe, you know, after it's cooled down, and you can just see the normal sodium there. Now, you can also see that the heat is being taken in by the steam boiler here and I'm just supplying with water using my aqueous accumulator down there and the water will be turned into steam through the steam line and into the steam grate here and boom plenty of steam so yeah that is the entirety of the breeder reactor okay a few more things like I said before, you just have a pipe adjacent to the heat exchanger and you can drain out the cooled sodium, or just the RC sodium, rotary craft sodium, that's inside of this tank. Now the thing is, the sodium is never used up, so if I wanted, I could take a pipe. Do I have a pipe that I could use? Some fluid ducts would probably help as well. And just connect it back into that guy. So you can just use the same sodium over and over again. All you need to do is replace the breeder reactor fuel. Let's see, I have a lever. And if I just take my wrench, 
that. Is the sodium being pumped out? Yes, it is. And it's just going to go back inside of the reservoir, then back into the system, and around and around. Secondly, another very important fact, the breeder reactor is no less dangerous compared to the normal reactor. As in, if you mess around with the radioactive material, you will get poisoned, and that's never a good thing. I repeat myself, but it is a big, uh, a big thing in rotary craft. Sorry, in reactor craft that you have to avoid, which is killing yourself. So, like always, to stop the neutrons, just have concrete. And like I said in my first video, two layers of concrete, as in two blocks of concrete like that, should stop around ninety-nine percent of the neutrons. And a third one should stop 100%. I haven't seen any travel through the three, but um, I still think it's 100%. I've I've played around with this a lot, and I've never seen it pass through three concrete, so yeah. And that is it for this video. Uh, it was a short video, but I hope it was informative. And if you liked the video, please leave a like, or subscribe for more Minecraft videos. Thanks for watching, guys.